we will stay in the NFL. And the Indianapolis Colts actually found a trade partner for Carson Wentz. And you and I have talked, I mean, this is two years now, that you and I have said that there is nobody in the NFL that would be willing to trade for this washed-up quarterback that has proven that he's not very good. He had one amazing year in his sophomore effort. And and that's all that he's got to show. And yet... No, no, no. No, he didn't have a year. He didn't have a year. Now, he, he had, had like part of a year. Weeks. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was MVB candidate for at seven, ten, whatever. It, it wasn't. It wasn't long. I will say that. Um, the deal here uh, is pretty pretty crazy. Uh, I'm I'm looking at it here. Washington will pay the full twenty eight million dollars due to Wentz for the 2022 season, which includes a five million dollar roster bonus. Uh, the Colts will receive the Washington Commanders third round picks in 2022 and 2023. The 2023 third rounder can become a second round selection if Wentz plays 70% of Washington snaps. And the teams also swapped second round picks in 2022, with the Colts moving up from number 47 to 42. And the Commanders are getting a 2022 seventh round pick. Um, you know, I I'm just I'm a little I'm a little interested in this. Uh, it said the Commanders offered three first round picks to Seattle for Russell Wilson. But Seattle opted to send him to Denver, so I don't. I, I mean, I understand that the Commanders needed a quarterback, right? What I don't understand is why would you go with this one? Like, <laughs> I don't understand this at all. Like this, obviously, this has got to be the last chance for Carson Wentz to prove that he can be an NFL starting quarterback, right? I think everybody looks at the stats and they're all. You know, he had 27 touchdowns and seven interceptions last year, and those numbers end up good. Like, a touchdown-to-interception ratio is good. You're almost 4-1 to one there. But there were so many other things. And he plays recklessly, He's and he, and he can't seem to get it done. The Colts missed the playoffs again last year. All they had to do was beat the Jags at the end of the season, and they're in the playoffs, and they couldn't get it done. I, I, I am so curious your thoughts on this. Well, no, I, so I, I think Ron Rivera, A, was on 10. I see as the coach probably on the hot seat starting the season off this year more than anyone else. And uh, and I think he's in wagon to a a really, really bad option um, for his going all in to save my job situation. Do you think that, um, he, he, that he did this? Like, do you think he was okay with this? I think he's okay with this because I think he's – I do think he's making a lot more decisions in that locker room than, 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 you know, a lot of other coaches. So he's not the team president, he's not the GM, and, and I think his voice is heard. Um, I don't like it. I think this is foolish. If you were going to do this, why not keep your draft pick and just spend your first-round pick on, on a quarterback? I believe this year, I do not think this is a great quarterback class. I think out of this quarterback class, at least two quarterbacks, will come out of it and have better numbers than Carson Wentz will this year. Two you know, I uh, <laughs> I was talking to, you know, our buddy McKinnon. Uh, I yeah. talked back and forth with him because he, he thinks that the Falcons should take a quarterback in the first round at, at number eight. And I said, I don't know that any of these guys are worth a top ten pick. And then we started going back and forth about, you know, this isn't exactly a big quarterback draft. And I said, and as soon as I say that, we're going to end up with two Hall of Famers, four Pro Bowlers, like guys that spend 15 years in the league. Like this will, this will probably end up being the class that gives us a lot of really good quarterbacks because we don't see it coming, right? No, I, I mean I don't know. I don't know if that's how it works. I think we know how to evaluate these things more than we've ever known how to evaluate them in the past. Uh, so not that we're better at it now than we've ever been, but you know I think these guys are pretty damn good at what they do. My my logic and thought process on this matter is just simply, um, I, I do think some of these guys are pretty good coming out of this draft. It, it's not a collection of guys. It's not a big number of guys. But but I think there are a lot of these dudes that are they're pretty damn good. 
and they're going to be just fine. And I, I'm going to tell you this. I would take Desmond Ritter right now, and I would take Matt Corral right now uh, with one bum wheel over uh, uh, Carson Wentz today. No questions asked. Not only do, are you getting those guys, but you're also getting them on a rookie contract. So you're paying them virtually nothing. Like what you're going to pay Carson Wentz this year, but you won't pay them in their first five years of owning them and owning their rights. Like, well, I think that we've insane. we've seen in the NFL over the past, what, five years, six years, that you don't have to the, – the whole veteran quarterback thing is maybe a little bit overdone. I don't think you have to be a veteran quarterback to be able to go in and affect a locker room and have success with a team because I think that these these quarterbacks now – are so prepared for the NFL game that they can come in and be successful right away now. It used to be that you had to sit them. But I don't think that you have to now. Like, I think what no, you're saying I, oh, is no, exactly yeah, right. Really don't. No. So, I, Corral so could have been just, really I, good there. Yeah. No, I just think I think Carson Wentz is, is, is so overrated, it's not funny. And for people to keep think, you know, throwing out numbers and stats and information that, that he's so good at football, it's just laughable. That's just ridiculous. Like you're you're embarrassing yourself now, people. Just stop. Just I mean, stop. the, the why, fact that why Indianapolis, you're so heavy, why people are so heavily invested in car, in thinking Carson Wentz is good. I guess maybe they said he was good when he was you know going to be a rookie or whatever, and 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 I said he was shitty, and so maybe I'm heavily invested the other way of just seeing that we all want the thing that we said five years ago to be true, but but we now know. Like, it doesn't matter what you said or what you thought. We, we have enough data. We have enough evidence now. We know the answer. Yeah, and that's the thing is that we people were always – when it came to Carson Wentz, it was, well, Frank Reich left and Doug Peterson didn't know how to get the good out of him, right? Well, then he went back to Reich. And, and once he did that and he still wasn't able to be successful. Everyone it, said Reich was going to fix him because he was good under Reich once. Listen, he ain't magic, okay? Yeah, and now you're going to uh, Washington, who owns the NFL's worst total QBR since the 2018 season, and it's 71 touchdown passes in that span, also ranks 32nd. And that it's a big reason why they've gone 24 and 41 since the beginning of the 2018 season. I mean, they just, they, see, they're not good. Did you see Washington's odds of, of winning the Super Bowl? <laughs> After this trade and before this trade, didn't it dropped? See that? Like it actually dropped to uh, 15, what? Like, Fifteen points. I mean, it was they, like they were they were 10,000. They were sixty to one. They were sixty to one. Okay, which is plus six thousand. Yeah, to win the Super Bowl. After the trade, they're now seventy five to one. <laughs> I'm not the only one that sees this. Look, I know that I'm just a moron, and tens of people listen to this, and none of them think that I know what I'm talking about. That's fine. That's 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 an acceptable opinion, right? These are people who do this shit for a living. They run numbers. They know these teams better than anyone knows these teams, and they think like I think. Yeah, yeah. I think well, so. Part of me wonders if those numbers were a little bit inflated because they knew Washington was sniffing around, and and if they did land a guy like Russell Wilson, then obviously. You know that changes your fortunes a little bit, so you don't want to get caught uh, having to give up on a bunch of uh, plus six thousand tickets. So that might be uh, all part I know of it. is all I know is their quarterback room was Taylor Hennig, and, <laughs> and they were six thousand to one, or six, and, sixty to one. Yeah, it's sixty to one, and now they're seventy five. And now, one. now it's Carson, and they're seventy five. Uh, I know it moved fifteen points. So. That is so bananas. Uh, so. So now, what do the Colts do? Uh, All of the rumors, all the speculation right now is that Jimmy G uh, is their focus at this moment. Uh, Do you think that's, you know, obviously that's like a steady hand. That's somebody that can come in and and run the offense and won't make a bunch of mistakes. So that's good. But, you know, does that do anything for you? Uh, I I actually think Jimmy G, now Jimmy G is nothing to be excited about. But I actually think Jimmy G is a step up from Carson. Yeah, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. I just I, I think he's not he's not nearly as reckless. He's not going to cost you in the way that Carson Wentz sometimes does. I think that's the easiest way to put it. 
So he'll he'll turn the ball over sometimes, but he'll also control himself a little more too. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still reckless plays. I mean, we saw the end of the NFC uh, championship game. Like we <laughs> we've seen it, but uh, but I do think that you can trust him a little more than you can Carson Wentz. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.